Okay, I've been hand gouging some cane today, and in the middle of doing that, I always find that it's, it's useful to take a break and to shape the cane uh, at this time. It's, uh, it's, it's, there are several good reasons for it. Uh, basically, I, th I think I get better results if I do it. It's also nice to take a break from, from hand gouging. So I've got a piece of, of gouge cane, cane that I've hand gouged here. Uh, if you can see, I don't use a, my, 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 I don't have a concentric cane. It's not the same thickness all the way around. It's, it's thinner on the sides than it is in the middle. But I take that piece of cane and I've, I've made it so that it's about my desired thickness, somewhere around 55 thousandths. And I'm going to take that cane and I'm going to look at it and I'm going to say, mm, well, it's way too long because this is about how long uh, a piece of cane should be. And so I'm going to take it and I'm going to say, hmm, not perfectly straight. You can see that it bends off a little bit here to the left in this section. This part here is pretty straight. And so that's the part that I'm going to use where the grain is straight. And I'll, I'll use that. So this end is cut off fairly nicely. If it weren't straight, I would, I would chop it off. I have a uh, very expensive uh, gauge here that I use uh, uh, to measure the, th the, the, the thickness or the length of the cane that I want. I use my also very expensive garden shears to cut off the end. And I just set that on here and I've got it straight and I cut it off and I throw away the piece that I don't want. Okay, so I have set that gauge so that it should fit into my straight shaper. And, and well, it almost does. So I have to take off just a tad more. So that should be good. Yes, it is. Okay, I use a straight shaper. Uh, I did that because, uh, not because I have some aversion to the folded shapers, but because I had always made reeds using gouge shaped and profile cane. And well, you get a straight piece that hasn't been folded when you do that. And so this was the least uh, change from what I was doing previously. Um, when I bought this, um, I uh, contacted the, the uh, retailer of, of this particular uh, shaper and asked him to send me um, several pieces of cane shaped on things that I thought were close. And I picked the one that, that matched what I was doing the best. This is a Pizzoni number two. I don't know if you can still get these. I got it quite a long time ago. Anyway, so what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to find the center of my gouge on the two ends. And in both cases, it's really close to the center of the piece. So I, but I want that center to match the center of my, of my shaper. And I want the shape to be straight. So I look to see that the uh, grain follows the straightness of the shaper. Okay and I clamp it down. I do one read at a time. Some people do more than that. Um, I was never very good at that. I tried that. Anyway, so I have a knife and a razor blade that I'm going to do my cutting with. Okay, so this knife uh, happens to be uh, my very first reed knife. I, I haven't used it as a reed knife in ooh, 30 or so years. And so I wouldn't use my reed knife on this because I might damage it. Anyway, so I'm just kind of taking some, some hacks at this. Um, you do have to realize that the shaper has a narrow point here. And so you don't want to just go down and then try to do that because you'll split into the, into the, um, into the part that you don't want to split. Anyway, so I'm cutting down in that and then I'll take a couple of of cuts in the other direction and kind of pull off the thing. And so this is just my roughing of what's going on here. 
and I'll do that on all four sides. Again, I'm working toward the middle where the, where it's where it's narrowest, and I'm not going to do that. Okay, so I'm just hacking off the big part of what's going on, being careful not to not to split into where um, where the metal still is. Okay, and then I'm taking a razor blade, and I'll start working with the razor blade and go closely to the edges of the razor blade. Again, stopping where the low point is and then coming at it from the other side. I'm stopping where the middle is. Okay. Same thing with this one. And do this on all four sides. Great. Not worrying about the tip area of the reed too much, the center of this, and I'll get to that later. Okay, and I just come in and make sure I don't go past the midpoint. And then everything flakes off nicely. And the same on this side. Okay, cool. Okay, and now I just finish up these last parts here near the tip of the reed. And I cut those off. One thing that I forgot to mention as I was starting this was when you take your piece of cane your piece of, that you have gouged, it is a good idea at that point to, there's one that I did a little while before, is to, I cut this off, is to make sure that in fact this is still within tolerance. And well that's, uh, it's really close. But if it, if it were, uh, both ends of this are a little bit thick, and so what I would do is I would just take this and to do a few little swipes on it in order to get this down. It was only about five thousandths of an inch too thick. And so I would just be working on that just a little bit in order to make sure that I was now and that was 52, so I took off a tad more than I wanted, and not quite enough on this side. So I'll take a little more off on this one. It's hard, you know, because I, I can't measure into the center of the reed. Can't measure here very easily. I suppose if I used the dial indicator, I could but I haven't. And so this is now where, I, where I would, I'm comfortable with it and I would then shape it as I just showed you. Okay, so now I've got a piece of cane that is gouged and shaped. Okay, and I will profile this soon, but I don't like to profile when my uh, when the cane is wet, so I will wait until this dries out and I profile with it dry. Okay, so thanks. Talk to you soon.